Hi, everyone. My name is Guy Yalif, and I've been trying to put AI in the hands of marketers for the last two years as CEO of Intellimize. For me, that journey began a long time ago. I was coding a rules-based expert system in college to design airplanes. And since then, I spent the last 15 years as a marketer and in paid media. And today, I want to help make you better consumers of AI by helping you poke holes in the things you hear, helping you get more out of the investments you're making, and helping you choose the solution that's right for you. My team and I believe AI can help each one of us accelerate our careers, deliver more to our companies, and get more done. And so we're going to spend the next 20 minutes talking through the different kinds of AI that are out there, talking through some concrete examples that illustrate why AI is strong, and leaving you with some questions to ask when you get back to the office on Monday morning. So let's begin. What is AI? Anyone have a point of view? Shout it out, please. Robots, machines, machine learning, another one? Deep learning, all great answers. Often people will consider AI to be machines doing things humans would consider intelligent. And we'll get more into some of those other terms in a minute. That may conjure images of the Terminator for you, but it turns out AI is already present in your life. If you used any of these companies in the last 24 hours, they helped you figure out how to get to this hotel, avoid reading spam emails, decide what video you were going to watch, decide what product you wanted to buy. Why? Because AI is particularly good at a handful of things. And they're illustrated by these four numbers. Anyone have a guess what these mean? OK, these are harder to guess. <laughs> AI is really good at managing a lot at once. In fact, it was on this stage a year ago, a great growth marketer that Ed referred to yesterday, Guillaume Cabane, talked about managing four and a half billion versions of a page on his website using AI. AI is also really good at accelerating learning. In fact, last year, our average customer did 25 years worth of A-B testing. Now, think about what that would do for your business if you could accelerate that much. AI is also, unlike us distractible, tireable humans, good at listening 24-7 and then acting on that. Four hours is the amount of time it took AI to react when a company had a big promo, tripled their traffic, and the new traffic behaved differently. The right answer changed. We'll go more into this one in a bit. And finally, AI is really good at acting with precision, superhuman precision, like finding that individual grain of sand on a beach. One is the, sample, is the segment size that AI is good at operating at. And in fact, these four together help us as marketers practically today deliver on the one-to-one -one marketing we've been talking about forever. Now, these are the four things AI is good at, and we're going to go more into them. But where is AI less effective? Well, if you think about our jobs as CROs, there are three parts to them. One, we need to understand our customers really well. We need to empathize with them. Two, we need to ideate. We need to, we've got a lot of creative work to do to come up with ideas that will persuade them to buy our products and services. And three, there's a lot for us to manage in executing our experiments day in, day out. To date, AI has not been particularly good at the first two. And so I think it is a great complement to uniquely human empathy and creativity to bring AI to bear. Now, what does that mean for us? I think AI is a superpower for us. I think AI will help us accelerate our careers, get more done, deliver more for each of our companies. Uh, and in fact, uh, you see it more widespread throughout the funnel every single day. Here's a look at the funnel. And it turns out a bunch of us have been using AI out in the open for more than a decade. Right when Google says, hey, give me five search ads, not one, because I'm going to go figure out the right one to show each individual visitor, and I'm going to show the good ones more and the bad ones less. That's AI. To give a couple of other examples, Persado is doing a great job of automatically generating more engaging email headlines using machine learning. Mid-funnel, if you're a B2B marketer, Mad Kudu and Infer are both using a lot of data to train a model that will then predict, hey, this person who just showed up at my site, are they a high-value prospect that I want to send to sales, or do I want to send them to self-serve? Lower down in the funnel, both Drift and Intercom have created rules 
abilities so that you can automatically interact with people that come to your site using AI. And Optimize has actually done something similar. When you use an audience in an A-B test, you are setting up a rule for what you want to show a particular audience. And Intellimize uses machine learning to go pick the right thing to show each individual visitor automatically. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but it gives you a sense of how pervasive AI is becoming. Now, what kinds of AI are there out there? Well, I'll focus on that practically, specifically for us as CROs, specifically website optimization. Machine learning scientists would have many ways of slicing and dicing that world, including some of the words we talked about earlier. Uh, but I'll focus on the distinction I think matters for us day in, day out. And to begin, you need to focus on before AI. We're all familiar with this, where we will come up with an idea, give 50% of our traffic to one idea, 50% to the base site, and execute on this. It's on us to manage the execution, and we pick an answer that we hope stays the same over time. And this is really good for picking one answer that you want to show everyone. Now, some of us might then say, well, is my audience all the same? If you think you want to treat different parts of your audience differently, then we go to the first kind of AI, rules-based AI, where you might do something like this. You might say, hey, for somebody in San Francisco, I want to show them the Northern California promotion. And this is great. You get to treat different parts of your audience differently. But you need to know the, who the segments are in advance before they show up. That's a big caveat. And you need to set up all the rules in advance. But if you can do that, you can drive more lift. Now, some of us as marketers might intuitively say, that's an if-then statement. That's not AI. Most, most uh, AI scientists would say, actually, it is. And in fact, most of the companies that are telling you, hey, I do AI, they're doing this. They're doing this. And you can see this throughout the funnel. Uh, you can see it in marketing automation drip emails. You can see it in chatbots. You can see it in some form of content recommendations. Now, as a marketer, I'm going to say, well, OK, this rule got me lift, so I want more of them. And they'll generally take this form, right? If somebody's in this audience or on this page or in this context, I want to then show them this message, this offer, this promo, this experience. Marketers usually start here and then realize, man, if, if a few rules are good, a lot of rules are really good. I'm going to get a lot of value out of this. If I were to take that San Francisco example and write a rule for every city in the US, I'd have 35,000 of them. That's obviously untenable for us as mere mortal humans. And so that drives us to the next kind of AI, which is machine learned. In machine learning, you've got a model learning from data to make a prediction. Now, on the data, different models need radically different data. Some need Google and Facebook size data. Some need really expensive data that you're going to get from a third party. Others don't. Make sure you've got the right data for the problem you're trying to solve. Two, the model, different models are good at different things. You know, the model Mad Kudu is using to predict lead score is very different than the model you might use to personalize a web page. And three, on the prediction, you want to make sure that as that model's learning, those learnings are being updated in the predictions that are being used to your visitors regularly, ideally continuously. Now, I share these three options because I think they're what's practically relevant to us as CROs. Yes, there's a lot more theory behind this, and if you want to go into it, I'm happy to talk to you about it until the cows come home after. But this is the distinction I think that matters the most. And how can we as CROs then go use this? Pretty much everywhere. There are people using each of these techniques you know, to try different headlines, different content, different offers, different promos, different images. You also could use it to auto-discover segments, to auto-generate those zillions of rules automatically, to take action on those results rather than waiting on us to decide we want to take action and to update the decisions that are being made as the world changes. So that's what's possible. I want to turn to four examples that each illustrate one of those strengths of AI. And the first one is with Chime. They're a modern bank that aims to improve the financial well-being of their customers. And their lean and experienced marketing team said, hey, I'm accountable for a bunch of new signups every quarter. I bet a lot of us can identify with that. And they were trying out on their homepage 
different headlines, different call to action, different hero image. And in the first six weeks of their testing, they tried 14 ideas. They got 8% lift, that was good. They then took that learning, baked it into their next four weeks of testing, tried 21 ideas and got 79% lift. That felt great to them. What helped them do that? Well, if they'd done a winner-take-all test, this would have been the winner. This would have been the thing they showed everybody. Great, data-driven decision. It would have been normal for them maybe to say, hey, what performed best on mobile? And they might have created a rule to say, look, I'm gonna show this on mobile and the global winner on desktop. Awesome. But because they were using AI, they were able to discover other pockets of performance like this as the best thing to show in Illinois or this as the best thing to show in the evenings between 5 and 8 p.m. None of us would have taken the time to go look through each one of those. M maybe somebody here would, but most of us, like, they, th that's too detailed. But with AI, they could automatically act with precision to go get those benefits in those pockets of performance. So that's acting with precision. What if the right answer changed? Well, that's what the skim faced. The skim is a newsletter app and videos that summarize the news, skim it so we don't have to. And they recently celebrated their fifth anniversary. They ran a big promo, and like so many of us, they wanted new signups out of their promo. They, while they were doing that, were optimizing their headline, subheadline, and call to action. And before the promo, these were the winners. These were the best things to show. They start their promo, traffic triples overnight. And it turns out that new traffic behave differently. It's not that their previous tests were wrong. It's not that the statistical significance was off. It's that the actual right answer changed. The population changed. These were the right things to show during the promo. And four hours later, the AI they were using had discovered, hey, these are the right things to show. Traffic changed. I'm going to show these more often. Now, I bet all of us can identify with wanting to get the most out of promotions and Typically, manual testing will take longer than the promo cycle itself. And so this is one way to get benefit from that. Another key point out of this is that, you know, there's this little assumption we all make that's a key one when we're doing most of our testing today. We run a test, we get the right answer, and we assume this is going to be the right answer forevermore. How many people in here have ever rerun the exact same A-B test to see is it still valid? Show of hands, please. Very impressive. I expected there to be like two. That's awesome. So it's probably a third of the room. Um, that's why this is a group of experts. Pep, you picked the right audience. <laughs> um, AI can keep doing that regularly. AI can keep listening 24-7, keep acting 24-7. And in the Skims case, as the couple of weeks after the promo happened, things reverted back to something close to what they were before, but not exactly the same. And so in this case, AI's ability to listen and act 24-7 was helpful for them. Now, they had some good traffic to work with. What if they didn't have a lot of traffic? That's the situation Perkville found themselves in. Perkville is a SaaS offering that creates loyalty programs for their customers, and they wanted to generate incremental social referrals. So they tried a whole bunch of stuff. They tried reordering stuff on the page, trying different calls to action. Uh, and over time, they had 39 different ideas, 39 variations they were running on this send referral page. But they had less than 2,000 pages a day. And if you multiply out all those 39 ideas, they had 633,000 versions of the page running at the same time. I mean, think about that. That's like years worth of A-B testing with this much traffic. But they were able to get 42% lift in two months using AI. Why? because AI can run multiple things on the page at the same time, and AI is really good at plucking signal from noise. So it's able to discern, while multiple things are going on at once, what's the impact of each one. It's like multivariate testing, but not the same, because it's changing the amount of traffic each one gets. And so for Perkville, this helped them accelerate their testing materially. Imagine what that would do for each one of us. Now, they had a lot to manage with 39 different ideas on their page, but another company had even more to manage. And so that'll speak to the fourth strength of AI. Stella and Dot is a company that enables women to run their own business by selling jewelry in person, by hosting events to sell, and by selling directly online. 
They have three totally different audiences with three completely different sets of goals that their CRO team is accountable for managing against. We're gonna focus on the e-commerce, the classic e-commerce funnel here. They started by focusing on the bottom of the funnel. They were focused on the cart page. They had a bunch of ideas that if you multiplied them all out, had 400 versions of the page running at once. The best performer, to all of our surprises, was changing the headline, that text just above the cart, when they added emotionally affirming language there, in this case, you've got great taste, that was the best performer on the page, contributed to 52% lift of getting from cart to checkout. Okay, they then said, let's go up funnel a little bit. Let's go to the product detail page. And they tried a whole bunch of ideas on here, 300 different versions of the page. Top performer, keep that purchase widget floating with her as she scrolls down the screen through the pictures, keep it in view. Okay, 8% lift, great. They then went further up funnel and said, we wanna drive more engagement on the site. And so they said, we're gonna work with this little banner that's just above the hero here in beige. They tried 25 different pieces of copy there, and to everyone's surprise, that drove like 400% lift. None of us expected that. Now, they could not have done this in a reasonable amount of time without AI. I mean, they had 700 plus versions of pages on one part of one flow for one audience. And they had three audiences with totally different goals. Like one of them is trying to increase basket size, the other one is trying to drive new seller signups. So for them, AI helped them manage an awful lot at once. It's like having an army of analysts helping you execute your tests. I hope these four examples illustrate what I believe AI is good at and how it can help each one of us. These benefits don't come for free, they do come with a cost. And that's the next thing for us to talk about. If you're gonna do manual testing, we all know, you need to come up with a bunch of ideas to drive lift. And then you need to check on those ideas regularly, update your test, and pick a winner. And if everything goes well, it's awesome. You get a data-driven answer to show a great experience to everyone. This is ideally suited in times when you can have only one answer. Like if you have, I don't know, two purchase flows on different technology stacks. You know no matter how good they both are, you're only picking one, because you're not maintaining two tech stacks. Perfect. You can then go rules-based. If you're gonna do that, you need a bunch of ideas, and then you need to set up all the ideas, all the rules, and maintain them. That's a lot of work. That's a big sack of work on the screen. And if you do that and everything goes well, you get a great experience to show each segment of your visitors, and hopefully that drives more lift. If you're gonna go machine learned, you need to generate a bunch of ideas. And in fact, in this system, more ideas are better. Because like the Google example, if you give the system more ideas, it has more opportunities to find the right answer for each individual visitor. And so if this goes well, you then get a great experience for each individual visitor. My hope is that these paint a realistic picture of how to choose AI that will help you put it in context and understand the cost and benefits. My suggestion to you is go home on Monday morning, think critically about your testing program, and ask yourself these questions to differentiate yourself. One, is my audience all the same? And if you say they are, I'll say, really? It's like saying, you know what, the average shoe size in the US for men is 10 and a half. Okay, every guy in this room, you're gonna wear 10 and a half shoes from now on. Now, while that sounds totally silly on shoes, it's what we're doing on websites regularly. Two, what's my testing velocity? How many tests did I get done last month, last week? What would it mean to me if I could accelerate that? Three, do I know when behaviors change? Do I know if my visitors behave the same today as they did a month ago or two months ago? And if I did, would I be able to take action on that? And lastly, am I able to deliver the right experience to each individual visitor? And if I could, what would that be worth to me? So I invite you to see AI as an opportunity. Rather than threatening our jobs, it's a great complement to our jobs. It should be a superpower that helps you deliver more, drive more lift for your organization, and get more done. Importantly, one question I get asked often is, hey, can I be ready for AI if I haven't mastered manual testing? My answer is an emphatic yes because AI will automate some of the parts of manual testing that are hard. It's actually simpler for us as marketers. So I invite you to go home, take advantage of AI, use it to accelerate your career, go test more, go learn more, go deliver more. If you want to copy these slides, 
They're available on our website at intelemise.com. I'll be around if there are more questions. And Michael, let's dive into the questions that are there. Sounds good. Thanks.